Well, welcome everyone to this week's episode of Jim and Java. Well, welcome everyone to this week's episode of Jim and Java, where your development and fundraising questions are answered every week. We're excited to have you with us once again with this broadcast. If you've got any questions, make sure you go out to at Dev F Strats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. Send us your questions because I know that many of you are asking fundraising questions and you don't know where to get the answers. And this is what our broadcast exists to do. We exist to answer your fundraising questions. So let's get to our first question. Our first question is from Bill in Chicago, Illinois. Bill says, can you explain the life acrostic to me? Well, Bill, clearly you have been watching our broadcasts and you even know what the life acrostic is. I always like to say, uh, make sure that you find individuals who are life partners with you, individuals willing to invest their life in your organization, what you're doing. What that refers to is an acrostic of four letters, labor, influence, finances and expertise. From the labor side of things, you want to find someone who is interested in giving of their time to your organization. There's almost nothing in our world today that's more valuable than time. In fact, I've had people say to me, Jim, you can have all the money you need, just don't ask for my time. It's too valuable of a commodity, and that's where people are at today. They, uh, they're, they're not as willing as they used to be to give up a Saturday morning, a Friday evening, a uh, Saturday afternoon, or a Sunday afternoon to uh, help you with uh, anything as simple as attending a board meeting, to passing out treats at a walkathon, to making sure that you are uh, having a, a table filled with uh, eight to 10 guests at your annual dinner. So those are all the kinds of things that could be done with labor. Uh, something that's very easy is uh, making sure that you have people who are willing to come alongside and help you with that volunteer area. Now from the I side of things, that's the influence. And we're wanting to find individuals who are willing to lend their influence on our behalf. That usually means someone who knows somebody well. I jokingly always like to say, remember the name Ned Ryerson. Uh, who is Ned Ryerson? Ned Ryerson was the insurance agent in the uh, movie Groundhog Day. And uh, Ned had relationships with everyone. He seemed to know everyone in town. Those are the kind of people, actually, not from the annoying side of things, but those are the kind of people that you would like to have involved in your organization. Someone who knows a lot of people is well networked and is willing to talk about your organization share with their friends what you're doing if they're excited about what you're doing they're going to share that with other people think about a restaurant that you like a lot you can't wait to bring your friends to that restaurant and uh, have a good time together exactly the same thing with a nonprofit organization if you've got someone who's a, a, a partner and they like what you're doing, just ask them to invite their friends to an event that you're doing or an activity or even just go to lunch with the executive director or a staff member. Makes a big difference. From the F side of things of life, that's the financial aspect of things. We want to find individuals who are willing to make a financial investment. Now remember, finances are one of the toughest things for people to surrender and to give up. Uh, you know, I've, I've always said that I've had some of the toughest questions and conversations with people and they're willing to surrender a lot of things. But giving up finance is always a little bit tougher. So don't rush people along if they're not quite there yet. Uh, just enjoy the fact that they're willing to give to your organization uh, with a first gift. Remember, second gift can actually be the most important gift you get from anyone because that begins a process of commitment to your organization. And so getting someone to be involved. Remember uh, the scripture verse in Matthew, where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be also. And so oftentimes people will confuse that with where your heart is, that's where your treasure will be. But it couldn't be anything further from the truth. And then the last area is the E, and that stands for expert expertise. The expertise side of things is finding individuals who are willing to give their get their skills, their talents, and uh, their knowledge of things. Give those over to your organization. Be willing to help. 
in a wide variety of ways. And that could be anything from financial management to strategic planning. They could help run a strategic planning time to helping you with your marketing into the community, help with uh, bookkeeping or help with um, any skill or talent, public speaking. Some people can be great salespeople and communicators and are willing to share those things with you. So those are just a few things uh, that the Life Acrostic stands for. So when, we, when you hear that phrase, find life partners, that's what I'm referring to. Individuals willing to invest their labor, their influence, their finances, and expertise. Next question for this week is from Dan in St. Louis. And Dan's asked, you've mentioned creating a development council or a development committee. What does that mean? Well, thanks, Dan. I appreciate that very much. Um, a development council or development committee is usually created that is separate from your board of directors. A board of directors has a very distinct role. In fact, I'd recommend watching a uh, few of my videos on the role and responsibility of board members in development and fundraising. Uh, but they, uh, individuals who, uh, well, no board member should be exempt from helping in the fundraising and development area. But oftentimes, boards will create a development committee that will be a subcommittee of the board, and those individuals are focused in particular areas. It could be a capital campaign to help build a new headquarters or facility. It could be a campaign for a program or project. It could also be to help to pull off an event such as a vision dinner. But when we talk about a development council, those are individuals who are major donors. They are identified by looking at your mailing list and finding out who are those 20% that bring in 80% of your dollars. And if they aren't currently on your board of directors, see if those individuals would be willing to either be on a subcommittee, a development subcommittee of your board, or would be willing to be on a development council that would focus in primarily on helping you raise money for your organization. And the good part about that is that these individuals, if they're already major donors, they know what it takes to give a major gift. They know what's needed, what's desired, the information, understanding the problem, the solution, and knowing the details that are required for that proposal or for that presentation to major donors and they are used to rubbing elbows with major donors already and so those are the kind of people who you want on a development council or development committee now just because a person's a major donor doesn't necessarily mean that they know what every major donor wants so make sure that you're careful with that and screen the ideas and plans that they have but chances are most of the time I found that they come up with some very good and very creative ways if nothing Nothing else, they can be very good at helping you thank people and be part of that process. Well, that's it for this episode of Jim and Java. Thank you so much for joining us. Once again, if you aren't already a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe and click the bell. It really is very easy to subscribe. I think people think it uh, can be too complicated, but it's just hitting that, that red and white subscribe button and click the bell because the bell actually is an important step. It notifies you that uh, another video has been released. And a lot of times I'm not able to get announcements out to people as easily as I can. And of course, as I said at the very beginning, if if you've got questions that you'd like answers to, make sure that you go out to Twitter and use the hashtag Jim and Java at DevFStrats. And as we always say, I want to help you increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Take care. See you next week.